It's time, time now for the toss in this Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blizz. It's the fourth round, and we have a match between Windward Islands and the Leeward Islands. We have match referee Shane Jeffers overseeing procedure, and we have Captain Afi Fletcher and Captain Amanda Edwards of the Leeward Islands, and Afi Fletcher has the coin. Heads is the call. It's a tail. So, Afi Fletcher, you've won the toss. <laughs> what have you decided to do and why? Uh, we have a bowl first. And then we just try and see if we can try something different. And then we try all different things. And, you know, so, we just decided to go with a different option. You mentioned trying different things. I know it must be tough coming in here, having won a game after how you've gone in the, in the, in the first version, which is a 50 over. So, what's the mood like in the camp? And how do you get the girls back up and running for such an important contest still today? I mean, even though you lost, I mean, you have to find ways to still keep mo motivated, you know. You have to try and keep the girls on par and talk to the game still, you know. Tell them, look, we still have games to remain in, you know. She's still keeping encouraging them. So, you know, we still have to find that motivation and that um, want to come out to, to um, compete still. Any changes to your 11? Yeah, um, Marceline in for Zeta and Tracy out for um, Malaika. All right, all the best to you, Afi. You lost another toss, Amanda. We you you won't mind losing the tosses if you can win the games. That was a good toss to use because the team and I were like, they want to bowl, they want to bat. It depends on what it is. The team leewards is team leewards. We are fit, we are capable of doing anything to bring back this game anytime. All right, I like your confidence. So any changes to your 11 today? We have one change. We have Tonya Martin in and Shine Moses out. All right, all the best to you, Amanda. So there you have it. Windward Islands, they've won the toss and they've decided to have a bowl first. Welcome to this last match in the Cricket West Indies T20 Women's Blaze. Ch sorry, Windward Islands versus the Leeward Islands. Windward Islands won the toss and they decided to bowl first. Who at the toss, a confident sounding captain in Amanda Edwards said, didn't matter which way it had gone, <laughs> they were ready for this contest. They are, after all, second on the table with nine points behind Jamaica. New opening combination tonight. Boyce is not at the top. Melissa Clark, who started things nicely for them, with some powerful shots in the last game, is there with Divya Saxena as well. Kiana Joseph with the ball in hand for the Windward Islands. Some changes in both teams today. Unfortunately, big news coming from the Windward Islands camp. Vice Captain Zeta James misses out with a niggle. Kiana Joseph, too. I thought she was about to bowl the first delivery. A bit of a false start by her. So, ready now. So, Joseph to Melissa Clark. B10 first delivery. So, good night, all. Having his coffee as usual. Uh, good evening, Stacey Ann. And as you said, Changes at the top there for the Leeward Islands who were inserted by the Windward Islands. Yeah, so apart from Zeta James, the other two players missing out, Tracy Byron and Selena Ross. This one is short. Played just in front of Mas Namaya Maslin, who's in tonight. So, Melissa Clark is off the mark. Melissa Clark, no stranger to opening, really. Um, she plays in the local league in Nevis, and in fact, she plays with a uh, men's cricket team. The highlights, the Nevis. Divya Saxena to face now with that trademark shuffle across the, to the off stump. But interesting strategy bringing uh, Saxena from the middle up to the top of the order. Full delivery. She batted quite nicely two nights ago for Leeward Islands in their victory. Stared things nicely in the middle, as you said. She's able to pick up a number of singles, especially in that square leg area. It's a huge appeal. A turn down. So, one run 
to start things off here after the first over. As we look at this appeal once more. Obviously too high and perhaps going down the onside. So rather hopeful there by the uh, Windward Islands. Uh, but a good start nevertheless. Just conceding one run from that uh, first over. Yes, the players out for the Leeward Islands tonight. Tonya Martin is back in. Recall she picked up an injury in that first game. So good to see she's fit and ready to fire. Tinita McCoy and... Tanetta McCoy, sorry, Therese Parker in and Cheyenne Moses. Sorry, I, I apologize. I'll just rephrase. Tanetta Martin is in. So Tanetta McCoy misses out, Therese Parker and Cheyenne Moses as well. I beg your apologies. So Glasgow will start from the far end. And perhaps a bit of change in strategy for the Windward Islands also. They seem to have been reluctant to uh, use... Uh, Glasgow and uh, one would think that she would have been on the board but here she's starting uh, this evening Glasgow to start pitches this one up driven firmly down the ground but Nerissa Craft and gets her wrong there to cut it off which of course was up in the black hole not a bad area to bowl to Melissa Clark she doesn't really use her feet a lot to start now you know, she's very much hands and she hits the ball powerfully as well. So taking a ball away from her early isn't a bad option. No, it's not. And uh, she's really the stand and deliver type of a batter. There you go. In her arc and she slams this over the mid-wicket boundary. Two bounces into the fence for the first boundary of this Leeward Islands innings. If we carry it up in a half. Uh, just outside half stump and she swung it, swung across the line, got good connection and it was over, short mid wicket and down to the boundary for four. Uh, so good shot. So a slight change in the field, that mid wicket fielder has been asked to come straighter by the captain in the direction that ball was just hit. This time she guides it past point, just a single. So good adjustment by Melissa Clark. She got the wider delivery, didn't play at it. That time she just used, you know, a nice soft touch to get it past point. Gets a single and gets off strike importantly as well. Interestingly in the second over, you no know, slip in place. That's go of course a wicket taker. So one is played nicely out to, to find mid wicket, sorry. That area, of course, has oh, been blocked. Oh, and it's a misfield. Error in the field sees them picking up a second run. So now seven runs off the over. Glasgow won't be too happy with that. No bowler is happy with misfields off their bowling. Oh, certainly not. Uh, that's giving away uh, runs. Two, three fielders backing up. None of them were able to stop that. So Saxena back on strike. It's been a good over for Leeward Island so far. Decides to leave that one alone. So seven runs off the second. Leeward Islands eight without loss. Yes, um, seven runs. Uh, boundary, the first boundary uh, for Leeward's coming up in that over. And uh, perhaps the policy here of the Leeward Islands would be to have uh, the... Uh, batters batter around uh, Saxena. Yeah, that's certainly a good idea. Um, but you saw the way they approached that game against Guyana. 
Although wickets were falling, a lot of the batters came out and they showed intent to score. Divya Saxena eventually just stayed and stayed them to 104, which eventually saw them going on to pick up a victory. So Kiana to bowl to Melissa Clark starts with a dot. Zayda James will certainly be a big miss for the Windward Islands tonight. Especially after her performance in the last match, picking up three wickets in the power play. She's been bowling quite well. She's been attacking the stumps, which is key, which has been key to her success. Unfortunately, tonight she misses out with a niggle. Swan is too short. And she finds the gap quite well. Does it have the legs to go to the boundary? No, it doesn't. Kimon Homer pulls it, just pulls it back in. So Good start from Melissa Clark. They're now up to 10 in the World Islands. Perhaps should, be, should have been looking for a third run there. The ball traveled very close to the boundary. And uh, yes. uh, they were rather slow with tho those runs. Yeah, this one is up. This one is smashed out to Jenny Le Glasgow, who overruns it. And it goes into the fence. What look? Like it should have been an easy catch, eventually is a boundary to Melissa Clark once more. It's judged it badly, came in too far, and it went overhead uh, for four. Miss Glasgow usually has, has safe hands. You would think once the ball is going in her direction, it's surely going to see the batter on their way, unfortunately. Just as you said, misjudging it on that occasion. So a change of angle now for Kiana, deciding to go over the wicket, start short, gets away with it, she plays it out to Kimon Homer at cover. But this is what you're going to get from the Leeward Islands. They're going to take their chances. They're going to go at the bowlers, especially in the power play. Tries to go again, fuller delivery, darted into the pads. There's a mix-up. Did she get back? No, she didn't. So the first wicket coming down by way of a run out, Melissa Clark stranded in the middle looking to get back, eventually is run out. Yes, uh, Saxena started for the run and uh, then decided to, to, to send the partner back. Might have been sold down the river a bit. Perhaps you could have another look at that run out. Melissa Clark. 12 of 12 deliveries. Good bit of feeling by Malika Edward just holding her nerve. It was a close call initially for LBW. Just keep her and feel the holding their nerve to execute that run out. Much needed wicket for the Windward Islands. Yes, and, and what was good about that the return from that fielder uh, looks like Crafton. Malika Edwards. Edwards, in fact, the left hander. Uh, also left-hander. Mm. Um, she just underarmed it uh, to the keeper who did the rest. Yes, so second over, third over completed with that run out, six runs off it. They are 14 without loss. Janelia Glasgow to continue to Divya Saxena. Angling into the pads, full delivery. Not able to beat Pearl at short square. The new batter is Shawnisha Hector. Good blow struck there by the windwards though, and uh, uh, Clark was beginning to look dangerous, and she was really belting the ball all over the place. Yeah, especially after that missed opportunity went down. We've seen a number of occasions, especially against the Windward Islands. You'll get a quick single there. Yeah, especially against the Windward Islands, usually when they give a batter a chance, that batter goes on to score heavily. On this occasion, they're able to pick up Melissa Clark of the next delivery. Well, Shanisha Hector now on strike. It's actually a no ball, front foot no ball, and it's a free hit. So what a way for Shanisha Hector to start her innings to a free hit delivery. Can it get out of a free hit delivery unless it's run out? I've seen players not putting away free hits in uh, this tournament so far. 
tries to go for it. She's bold, but it's a free hit. And it'll run into the boundary for four. So they get a boundary in, in case. Although it crashed into the stump. Good option from Glasgow to attack the stump. Shanisha Hector disappointed that she didn't connect. But they still managed to get four from it. Well, Lee Woods would take that. They would not be, dis dis be disappointed by the result. Perhaps if she had gotten back on it, it might have gone straight to a fielder. Uh, but the ball striking the stumps and running away for four. So a good result for the Leewards in the end. So mid on goes back to long off, long on, sorry. But Hector is not yet off the mark. Almost chopping that one on to her stump is Hector. She's been in good form with bat and ball in this tournament. She hasn't really delivered in the last two matches, but she will certainly be looking for a score on the board for her team today. Yes, but I, I wonder why why Longhoff has been sent back. A uh, batter yet to get off the... Long on, sorry. A batter yet to get off the mark. And uh, the captain there going on the defensive. Midwicket is on the boundary also. She's found her line in the silver Glasgow. It's been a bit too full. But she certainly found her line and lent to Shanisha Hector those last three deliveries. Maybe a bit... Waking up by the front foot, no ball that she bowled. She's getting it together now. Putting some good deliveries together to Shanisha Hector. It's a bit short. Try to pull it away. Doesn't make connection. Still try to wonder though why allow a batter and uh, Hector is not really taking advantage of the situation she could just uh, push some of some of those deliveries uh, down towards mid and get off the mark quite easily well it's probably owing to the way she plays you notice since she's faced she's faced four deliveries so far and she's played a shot a ball she's a not <laughs> there you go again hitting it out to that fielder who almost comes into play you look for a single it's not on so that's why the captain has these two fielders out because she isn't looking to take a single. She wants to get on with it and she's looking to go big. So that over comes to an end. Four overs bowl, 21 for one. She did in fact. So back now, 21 for 1, Leeward Islands. This Miss Batter Melissa Clark was run out by Malika Edward. A change of bowling from this end. Kiana Joseph is being replaced now by Pearl Etienne. So Hector on strike, she's one of five deliveries. Use of the feet, and she's bold. So Shanisha Hector looking to be ultra aggressive has been bold by Paul Etienne. Well, looking to be ultra aggressive, but losing a the shape. They're going across the line of that one. Had she looked to play that one straight down the ground, uh, she might have connected. And uh, being bowled all over the place. So uh, the windward striking once more. Uh, striking in the fifth over. In fact, at the start of the fifth over. And we see more batting changes here for uh, the Leeward Islands as um, Sinelda Willett goes to the crease. What a poor shot, though. First delivering the over. 
instead of looking to go straight down the ground playing across the line and uh, of course um, she was new to the crease so her timing would not have really been on but Etienne to her credit keeping the ball on the stumps and uh, up to the bat and uh, uh, forcing an, uh, uh, an, an error yes. so will it with the promotion no Rennie's boys as yet tonight so Paul Etienne <coughs> to Sineldo Willett and limiting to how they look for a single a bit of a miscommunication they survive in the end it's Maya Gilmot fumble there yes I did, but picked up cleanly uh, Willett would have been under some pressure Hearing that lone voice of Afi Fletcher. But interesting, the, when you look, look at Saxena. High in the air. This is high in the air. The keeper is getting under it. And she takes it quite easily. So Paul Etienne strikes again. A second wicket goes down in the over. So what was 21 for one is now 21 for three. Yes, we let look into uh, turn this around the corner. Taking a, a leading edge. Probably the top portion of the bat. And skying in the air behind there, and the keeper taking a good catch. But uh, Leewards in some distress at this point, losing uh, two wickets in this over so far. So Rini's boys is now coming out to the middle. We think of strategy he this evening for the. Uh, leewards, but it's not working so far. I was looking at Saxena, the way she backs up and she holds that bat in her right hand. And one would have thought uh, that she, she, she would have been holding the bat in her left hand, backing up. If you could just take a look at her uh, for this delivery. Not in the approved manner. So well behind it, Renee's boys. So wicked dot. So wicked dot, wicked dot. Dare I say, is a wicked coming here of this next delivery? All, all? Well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. You <laughs> won't have long to wait. Kept it out that time, Renee's boys. So two wickets in this over. No run scored off it just yet. The veteran Paul Etienne standing up. All this play in this tournament but looks pretty fit. Still running in hard and creating chances for her team. Played with a lot of respect. To finish things off, but double wicket maiden, Winwell Leeward Island, sorry, 21 for three. So we have had some five overs completed, and uh, very successful over there for uh, the Winwards and for Paul Etienne. Certainly the veteran has continued to serve uh, the Windward Islands very well at this level. So Janelia Glasgow will get a third over in the power play. It's the last over in the power play as well. If you look at Boyce at the far end, uh, she is doing the correct thing while backing up. She has that bat in her left hand. A few spectators in. No doubt uh, that victory uh, Thursday evening for the league was bringing them in. It's full of delivery. Bottom edge straight to Paul Etienne and square leg.
bit short. Cut through the gap. Good piece of field in there by Kimon Homer. So there was no one out there on that cover boundary. It's a good support in the field so far from the Windward Islands tonight. So the, the, the fielders, they, they have been on their toes this evening, uh, the Windward Islands. Left alone that time from Saxena. It's obvious that the Windwards they have been doing some thinking about uh, the way they have performed in their recent matches, and uh, they have come out here this evening with a different strategy. We we have seen Glasgow in the attack early. Paul walk to the left of Paul. She does well, so they can't get the single. Yes, and as a question was asked at the toss, I, I asked the skipper about the mood in the camp. They are a pretty decent side. You saw the way they performed in the Super 50 tournament, and I believe a lot of expectations um, were had coming into this T20 tournament, and the way they performed here certainly n does not speak to the quality that they have in this lineup. A lot of the, the, the losses came by way of unforced errors as well in the field. Bit short, played nicely, but can't pick the gap. So a maiden over completed, back to back maiden, maiden overs, and the score remains on 21 for three. Pretty good over there by Glasgow. On target, a uh, ball in the right line, and uh, not giving anything away. So Leeward's uh, struggling a bit at this point. It's the end of the power play. Paul Etienne with that double make it wicked maiden has the ball in hand once more. Lee Woods would need something here from Boyce, Renice Boyce. And she's been dropped on the order today after that 67 against Barbados. She's didn't really trouble the scorers in the other two matches. So they drop her down the order, but she's still in pretty early, still in, in the power play. A change of field, four out now. Full, showing a lot of respect to Paul Etienne. She does get the ball to move a bit in the air, Paul Etienne, when she bowls. So we have third man back, long on, long off, and mid wicket. And there's an easy single to be had down the ground for Renee's boys to get off the mark. It's a huge appeal, but that certainly is going down leg. Chase is on for Malika Edward. She'll pull it back in. They get two, but I believe that's leg buys. Waiting on the signal from umpire Vicky Daniel. Seems to have been going down leg, but a bit of the leg front, the leg stump uh, exposed nevertheless. So Etienne continues to be tight. No run from the bat yet in this over. All of the matches that we've had in this tournament so far, we're in the fourth round, and all of the game seems to be progressing in a similar fashion, especially when wickets are lost early in the innings. It almost looks as if you're watching the same match over and over again. The batter somehow can't find a way to score, can't pick up the singles, lots of dots build up, built up. Then the wicket falls and it becomes even harder. So certainly something teams need to work on and you think like after the amount of games we've had in this tournament that you'll see a different approach from the batters coming out but 
quite similar in the way they've approached their innings, most of the teams, especially when they lose wickets. So would you say it's a lack of skill on the, the part of some of these batters? Yeah, over comes to an end. It's 23 for 3 after 7 overs. I won't say it's a lack of skill. I think it has a lot to do with mindset. Because in this T20 format, it's so easy to get swept up in wanting to hit the ball very hard, wanting to hit boundaries and go big. And sometimes you forget, you know, you can pick up runs by pick taking a single. We've seen in this tournament, a hundred runs seem to be a challenging score on the board. So it's 120 balls. Yes, you are on the back foot early. But start to look to find a way to rebuild the innings. You cannot rebuild the innings by just scoring well, you're not scoring by just facing dot after dot. Just two runs coming from that by way of leg buys. So the last three overs bowled in this match, just two runs coming off it. And leg buys, of course. You still got to show intent to score. And that innings played by Shabika Gajnabi today was a perfect example of how you should approach the innings. Her, her scoring rate never dropped below 90. Her strike rate never dropped below 90. In fact, it increased as the, back, the, the innings got further, as she got further into the innings. Change from the fine, though. Afi Fletcher on, beaten. And why I go back to that example today of Shabika Gajnabi, although wickets were falling behind her, every time she got on strike, she still found a way to score, still found a way to pick up a single at least until she got a, a loose delivery to put away. That's certainly a template you can follow in this T20 Blaze tournament, especially when you're on the back foot early. A slip comes in for Afi, Kiana in slip. Beating the outside edge again. There's a huge appeal for stumping and she's gone. So quick work there by Ernisha Fontaine, who picked up the most the, the, the award for most dismissals in the Super 50 roundup things. So really quick hands from her. Being aware of what's going on with Davia Saxena's back foot. Probably on the line. And poor Vicky Daniela judged her to be out. So well, Winwood Island certainly all over Leeward Islands tonight. Probably on the line is, the, you know, from our vantage point and from the playback, we will never be able to tell uh, from that playback whether or not uh, she had something behind the line. But most importantly, the finger of the umpire went up and uh, she was given out. Um, she stood there, she looked at her foot and uh, in the end she had to walk away as the dreaded finger of the umpire was raised. So Leeward Islands on the back foot early. Captain Amanda Edwards in now. Renee's boy still there. They have 12 overs after this one. They still can look to build towards 100. But it's just about the approach that they decide to take in the rest of these overs. A wide delivery stands up and belts it down the ground for just a single to start. So Fletcher drying blood in her first over. is pitched up, driven down the ground. Just the three fielders out. Long off, long on, and mid-wicket. Looks to walk this one. They look for a quick single. And she makes it quite easily in the end. That single, of course, takes off the mark. 
So 11 deliveries for her first run. Renice Boyce. Looks to give herself some room and just finds the fielder at cover. Brings the over to an end. Two from it. After eight, 25 for four. So Paul with a third over. It's full driven. <coughs> Cannot find the gap. It's been the story of the night for the World Islands. Lots of deliveries hitting the fielders. This one is full. Play down the ground to long on. Captain Afi Fletcher quite vocal tonight. You hear her saying, keep going, ladies. Huge appeal. Certainly heading down the leg side. My word, that one would have uh, probably missed the fifth stump. <laughs> and uh, raucous appeal there by Etienne. She's a lively character, Paul Etienne. Still pretty fit. She's always wanting to be in the game. So you can expect her appealing. She loves to pick up wickets. You saw the way she reacted when she picked up those two wickets. Your Island's going away right now, though. It's a bit short. Flicked to the onside. Nicely worked into the onside there by Edwards for single. Yes, yeah, so it's important for these two to try to get to that 10 over mark where they get a, a drinks break and then start to think about how they're going to rebuild their innings. Left alone by Boyce. And start, that's the end of the over as well. They are 26 for four on the Leeward Islands, nine overs bold. So just get to the drinks break one more over until we get to that point it's a pretty low score after nine overs they still have 10 overs they still have 11 overs to go but as i was saying get to that 10 overs mark both of these batters that's what they should be thinking now and then just reassess how they are going to go about getting close to 100 from there this is not certainly not impossible we need to think about bowlers that they can target in this lineup at the screen just now though there seems to be quite a few more spectators in than we have seen previously or oh, you expect that after the performance the other night from leeward islands especially that hat trick from jazara claxton to take them to victory only hat trick in this t20 blaze tournament so far seems to be a miss stump in there for amanda edwards <coughs> Keeper wasn't able to hold on, she managed to get her foot back in time. Gives herself some room, slaps it to the right of Paul, an extra cover, so she gets a single. She's 
been giving ourselves some room probably looking to access that area over well up and over cover uh, through the cover area Amanda Edwards hasn't quite connected well it's been the third time to Afi I've seen her giving herself some room and she's on strike to her he what started well they got some boundaries uh, but things have slowed up considerably with the loss of those wickets in over number 10 over number 10 and uh, uh, 28 for 4 on the board stared into the offside <coughs> yeah fair to say they were 21 for 1 now they are 28 for 4 just seven runs added after that fourth wicket and four and just so certainly innings has been stalled she gets an edge will just be a single though so they were 21 for three after the power play four more overs have been bowled they've only managed to add eight runs and the players will take a refreshment break. Well, back live at Warner Park. Uh, it's a pleasant Saturday evening. Penultimate day of this, uh, well, penultimate round, in fact, of this uh, T20 Blaze tournament coming to an end. Concludes on uh, Monday. Uh, we just had 10 overs completed and uh, Leeward Islands halfway through. But struggling at 29 for 4. Etienne will continue. Uh, to boys, to Renee's boys. Swings one. this one up to mid wicket. And uh, just a single as Glasgow comes from off the boundary. So Zeda, the leading wicket taker for Windward Island, she's out today, as I mentioned. She picked up that injury in the game against Trinidad and Tobago to her to her hand. Etienne in the fourth over, she has picked up two for three so far. 
driven fun. powerfully uh, down to long on uh, for a single. Yeah, the other bowlers have certainly stood up in this game. Said as I mentioned, she's put her hands up, taken wickets and bowled some economical spells as well. The other bowlers have put their hands up for the Windward Islands tonight. Paul with two wickets to her name. This time, it's out to mid wicket. Glasgow is quickly in and sends a throw on the bounce to the keeper. And just a single, so good attacking field in there uh, by Glasgow coming off the mid wicket boundary. You notice a change since the water break. The batters are looking for runs. They have accumulated three singles in this over so far. They're looking to attack that on side, that vacant area. No feelers in tight around mid wicket and mid on. So it's easy for them to just hit it in that area and pick up a single. And that's the area they've targeted since they've come back from the water break and they've picked up three quick runs there. Coin down leg, loud appeal for Metien. But she has a very has some very strong vocal cords and she has been exercising <laughs> them all evening. Certainly Point. missing fourth stump. She power. loves an appeal, Paul Etienne. She's going to appeal. She's going to give herself every chance to get a wicket. Fortunately, well, that was certainly heading down the leg. Missing the fifth stump as y as you say all. He would realize, though, as this one is pushed back to Etienne, he would realize, though, that it's uh, important to put a score on the board. Uh, if they could get past 100 runs, uh, 100 seems to be uh, just about par here at Warner Park in this T20 blaze. Well, three runs to start in that over and three dots to finish. 32 now for four. So they'll need to continue scoring. Managed to get three in the beginning of that over. Amanda Edwards couldn't get Paul away for the last three. And that was the end of her spell as well. An exceptional one, Paul Etienne. Four overs, bold. Two wickets and just five runs. Fantastic figures indeed. As we see a bowling change from the far end. And it's Gilbert. Amaya Gilbert who comes into the attack. Starts well. Delivery with spins in uh, to Boyce, who has to defend. So there's a short third when a backward point cover, extra cover. Struck down towards long on fielder coming in, takes it on the bounce and a single to voice. Yeah, it looked as if that <laughs> Karina Noel, she was jogging coming in there. I mean, it was hit high in the air. And from our vantage point, it looked as if she couldn't get it. It looked as if she could have taken it. She was jogging coming in, but maybe it was further away than I thought because she is a pretty athletic fielder and gives herself every chance. Now the peel there might have been drifting down the onside, taking on the pad. Lots of appeal in the pe appeals in the last two overs all. Tells you that the bowlers are on top of change in the field now. Well, Karina Nobel was coming in. The circle. And Afi Fletcher decided she should stay back. Played back to the bowler this time. And uh, now done. So thus one run so far in this over. The overs are slipping by. We're in over number 12. Toss top missed. Stumps broken. Uh, but that back foot is grounded. Edwards are missing it completely. Yeah, she's very slow through the air, Amaya Gilbert.
shot and just worked into the onside. Uh, just short of a good length. And uh, just a single. In fact, the over comes to an end. Just uh, two runs from that first over by Gilbert, Amaya Gilbert. And uh, the windwards continue to keep things in check here. Live, not a bowling change. Kiana Joseph uh, from the media center end. Amanda Edwards facing. Tossed up, driven over that short mid on down to Noel. She comes off the boundary, feels well, just a single. Josephine a third over. Who was a slipping by rather quickly. The words running out of time. Not a tossed up delivery this time on about off stump and just pushed quietly into the offside. Fletcher comes into play. Banged uh, down to Etienne Miss Fields and allows a single. Stop and just uh, <laughs> uh, dug out, in fact, <laughs> uh, just pushed into the offside <laughs> by Edwards. And she doesn't really use her feet. A few of those deliveries, if you're able to use your feet well, you should be able to get onto it. And she's pulled in the air down towards square leg. And uh, Glasgow has some running to do to her right, but just a single. She's a powerful strike of the ball, Edwards, but she's more hands than feet. Hardly moves her feet there. Few fold deliveries, especially. There was one soft left to her in this over and one. Quick single here taken. And it gets it in the end quite easily. Of course, uh, use of feet does not necessarily mean you have to uh, charge down the wicket after the balls, uh, you, it's just a question of getting into the correct position to play the shot and uh, creating length, whether you, you are uh, trying to create a short length or you, you are get, uh, trying to get to the pitch of the ball. And we have not seen this happening by, by these batters. Yes, and Amaya Gilbert, who's very slow through the air, you have to create your own pace. You know, so you, you one of the ways to get on top of her is to use your feet to her. If you have good footwork, that is. Uh, certainly. If you just sit back and let her bowl to you, Kiana Joseph, you're always going to be in, tr in trouble. Kiana Joseph too is also so s very slow to through the ear. Gilbert is the one continuing from the far end though. Tossed up. Hit out towards mid wicket. In fact, it seemed to have gone all the way. A no ball signal, in fact. That's yeah, so why she didn't and need. And six one signal. She didn't need to use her feet to that one, boys. Was tossed up right on her bat, and all she had to do was get some, was swing it 
into that vacant area. And six run signal, also a free hit as well. I was wondering so if that no was a signal by the umpire. Was for height. Uh, yes, it was for height. Use of the feet slap down the ground to long on. Yes, the square leg is the one that signal for so signal is for height, no doubt. So the four six of the match. Once again, uh, the effort has not been capitalized on, just a single. But Edwards comes back into strike. Uh, so boy striking a mighty blow. She's 15 from 26. Straight to the field of the eight extra cover, Joseph. This one is struck down towards. In fact, it goes. He <laughs> helped over the bad here uh, by Noel, it looks like, in the distance. And it goes for six. We well, just spoke about Amanda Edwards and the fact that she's a very powerful strike of the ball, but she is very much more hands than feet. Hit that one straight to what should have been a regulation catch for Karina Noel, and she tipped it over the bar for six. So a second six in the over now. Good over so far for the Leewards. Two sixes and uh, hitting the ear, hitting the gap, down towards extra cover, but well fielded in the end and uh, just a single. So partnership of th 30 runs so far um, from 39 deliveries. Pulled away, pulled up to mid-wicket. Uh, just a single this time. But it seems as though the leewards they have decided to go after the bowling, and uh, in particular, after the bowling of Edwards. Well, it started with a six. And that sort of gave them the driving force to start scoring more in this over, and take it to the bowler. Backs so away, plays it out to cover. Just a single. So 17 runs coming off that over. And a very good over it's there for the leewards. Score moves up to 55 for four. The most expensive over of this match by some distance as well. Leewards certainly had to uh, start accelerating Uh, they have taken the run rate up to 3.93 now. How often have you seen this all? Bowler drops a catch. Captain calls her in to bowl the next over. Well, I have looked at a lot of cricket in my day, so yeah, I would say very often. <laughs> I saw it just today in an IPL match. Rush, um, Pant was dropped by Harshal Patel. On the boundary, the captain called him in to bowl the next over, and he actually picked up the wicket. So, Afi Fletcher hoping for the same faith here. Noel, who dropped that catch off Amanda Edwards, who's on strike on the boundary that went for six. She now has the ball in hand, a chance to redeem herself by picking up this wicket if she can. Noel? Fletcher probably might have been looking at that match you looked at <laughs> earlier <laughs> on. <laughs> Wild swing here. Uh, by Edwards, missed it completely. So a good start by Noel. Almost replicating what Harshal Patel did in today's game. Just missing a swinging blade of Amanda Edwards. Batters are looking to score though. Good shot, but would only get a single. As Etienne comes from off the long and boundary. Was in there for some time. Uh, but safe. Yes, after that first six was hit in that over, you've seen a change in approach by these two batters. Four wickets down, of course. 
wide delivery signal wide also yeah a bit too wayward from the wall but good take from Fontaine diving around two hall left Boyce is swinging and uh, seem to have been put down there a short square leg. Yeah, that was short and pulled fiercely to that short square leg fielder. It was hit pretty hard to her. It got to her quickly as well. She put it down in the end, but my word, that was traveling to her at square leg. Hard and low to Gilbert. This one is in the air over extra cover going out towards the boundary. Crosses the boundary line now. Four runs are to boys. So runs coming uh, for the leewards now. Yeah, use of the feet from boys and look to hit it squarer rather than straighter. No one was on the point boundary. So a really good option from her to get. 61 for four. The Leeward Island supporters becoming excited now. Yeah, they certainly are. So that was a good option from her. To pick up a, a, a not a boundary in this over. Runs are flowing. This time she just gently pushes it into the offside. So that victory the other night uh, certainly would have brought out, brought out a few more spectators this evening. And of course, this being also being Saturday evening. That's it hard, but straight uh, to Crafton, who is at uh, long off, just a single. So seven runs coming from that over, and the Windward Islands, they have to be very proactive here. You have to be wary of these two batters. They are very <laughs> powerful strikers of the ball, and British boys have started hitting the ball quite cleanly after... She was unable to do so in the beginning of the of her innings. And this is a good move, I think, from Afi Fletcher. Taking the responsibility, bringing herself back on the ball. She needs a wicked hair. Need to get rid of one or two of these batters as quickly as possible. Five overs left. And uh, you rightly put it there. Uh, they need to get one of rid of one of these batters. Uh, they remain there for the remainder of the innings. The Leeward Islands could uh, find themselves with a, a fairly good total, perhaps uh, just a, on about 110. They are on course at the moment to get very close to 100. These two batters, uh, we would put in the category of big hitters. So they are able to clear the fence. So if they stick around till the end... Onward Islands could well see themselves ch chasing a hundred runs or more. It seems to be a quiet, uh, sort of quiet confidence though about the Leeward Islands team. Yes, they would have lost some wickets, but um, certainly those a uh, couple of wicks, victories in this this one is powerfully struck up towards mid-wicket. Almost wrong-footed Noel. But she recovered nicely in the end and just a single. And the captain did say at the toss, bat force, bowl force, doesn't really matter to them. They are a pretty confident side, Leeward Islands, especially after those two victories. I think you've never won a game in this tournament before. You come in this T20 blaze and now you have two wins under your belt. This one just over Kiana's head. Uh, eased over in fact and they're going back for the second run. This is good running. Yeah, really good running. Really good awareness shown by Boyce. It wasn't hit with any power which was just tipped over the head of Kiana Joseph. Didn't get herself in a position quick enough to backtrack and take the catch. And they managed to get two because it was in the gap as well. So the words being able to increase their scoring rate. This one is driven powerfully. And uh, they seem to be getting a run from every delivery now. 
And that's what they need to do from here on out. They cannot get a boundary. They need to minimize the duck balls. So Lee Woods fighting. Uh, losing three quick wickets. After being 21 for one. On a widey signal, and they're through for the run. The stumps are uh, broken by the return from Fontaine, uh, but Edwards are uh, safely home. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, the decision of a wide being reversed there by umpire Labar and signaling leg by. Uh, so, very critical, too. Leg by as opposed to. Uh, why do we would suggest that there's just one run and no extra deliveries? So Flitter once more. She's driving that and missing. Uh, beating the keeper also. And going behind the keeper for a single. So over number 16 comes to an end. live you could hear uh, supporters in the southern stand shouting encouragement to the Leeward Islands team Glasgow comes back uh, from the media center end she had a, has had three of us for ten runs so far and uh, Looking to tighten things up a bit, perhaps getting a wicket here for a team. The so cover is in the circle. The four fielders out, fine leg, mid wicket, long on and long off. Amanda Edwards on strike. Turns it in the air. Gilbert is in pursuit, cannot get there to take the catch. And. Uh, just a single. Airborne a bit there from uh, Edwards. Uh, gets away. Ball going into the vacant uh, mid wicket position. Mid wicket is back on the boundary. And Gilbert is at square leg, uh, at short square leg. So never really had a chance of getting to that one. Everyone important here for the Leewards. Swings that one down the onside, gets a run. Fire the wide route. Leewards going to the 70s, 70. Runs on the board. Swings and miss. Shortish delivery outside the off stump. Yeah, all of the fielders on the boundary are on the leg side well, with the exception of long off. So if boys can just give herself a bit of room with that line. Yeah, mid wicket though, I looking find is to hit it over cover or uh, through the cover area. There's no one at square leg though. Swings, it goes down towards a uh, uh, backward square. Just a single as Edwards is quickly around and into a left. And just a single. So a good result there for uh, the Winwards. Yes, but going back to that delivery. 
that delivery was full enough and had enough width. It wasn't very wide, but just enough width for boys to just try to access that cover area. All the fielders are up in the circle. She is strong enough to do that. Instead, she was looking to go on the onside where all of the fielders are on the boundary. Short. This one could run away for four. And does so now. So there's no one at square leg. There's a short square leg, in fact. It was turned into the onside. Timed nicely there uh, by Edwards. And it ran away for four. And she played it a bit later as well, Edwards. And she was able to get it past Amaya Gilbert in at short square leg. So a good option there from her. Not looking to hit it, to bludgeon it down the ground. Because it would just be one. Both batters, of course, in the 20s. Good fight back here by Lee Woods. Not an imposing total by any means. This time straight to Gilbert with a short square leg and no run. She looked to give herself some room, Amanda Edwards. I was looking to walk it to the on side. Yes, she got the boundary previously at square leg, but she can still look to access that cover area where there's no fielder there after giving herself so much room. Slow delivery and signal wide. Uh, too wide of off stump. Uh, Glasgow does not seem to agree with the umpire. Umpire aboard. Stands there a bit. Amanda Edwards is looking to leave it alone. It will just call wide eventually. But just get some bat onto it because third shot third is in the circle. This one goes to that shot third. And uh, she can't score. Projected score of course 86 as that overcomes to an end. So we have had 17 overs completed. Uh, another three overs to go. And with six wickets in hand, uh, these uh, batters should be looking for some boundaries. Seven runs coming off that over. I believe the score would be 75 for four. Just wait on them to update the score. No, actually, it should be 76 because there was also a wide after that four. So, score should be 76. I'm using my memory here. I hope I'm correct eventually when, when they eventually get it right. But the score should be 76 for four after the 17th over. Amaya Gilbert gets another over. Swings and misses stumped. So she was charging that one from Gilbert outside the off stump. And uh, beaten in the flight. And Fontaine took uh, cleanly and removed the bills. And uh, she's on her way. Yeah, pretty decent piece of bowling from Amaya Gilbert. I mentioned that she's pretty slow through the air. Boys looking to come down the ground on that option. Give it was given some width as well from Gilbert. Was never when really to the pitch of that one. Yeah, so when you're coming down to a, a, a batter, you cannot come down in a straight line to a <coughs> bowler. Sorry, you cannot come down in a straight line. And once it misses the bat, you know you're always going to be gone for all money. This is hard for you to catch up because you're coming down in such a straight line. You're always going to miss it. So, Gilbert strikes. A good call from Afi to bring her young half spinner into the attack. She did go for 17 runs in her last over. Just showing the young, young lady that she has faith in her. She is one for the future, Amaya Gilbert. It's good to see that the captain is showing some faith in her and giving her another over. And she has a lops, lots of options in the field that she could have turned to. And she's sticking with Amaya Gilbert and it's paid off for her. 
Ano, bate do. Kde byli Adri? Get off the mark with an easy single. Down to Langan. So we seem to have the updated scoreboard now. Uh, 77 for 5. Projected score, of course, being 89. But Leewards would need a bit more than that. Give him some here, and she backs away and plays it up to long on. One would have thought that she would have uh, tried to use her feet and uh, get to the pitch of that one and hit it over the top. Yeah, Amanda Edwards is, is very different <coughs> to Rini's boy. She doesn't really use her feet much. What she's been trying to do, though, is use the crease. So she's been u looking to draw away from her stumps. Pulled, not timed. Up to mid wicket, just a run. But so far, so good for uh, the Windward Islands. Uh, Gilbert has picked up a wicket and they have not been able to uh, get a boundary off this over so far. She's playing this one in the air over <laughs> Joseph. And going back for the second run. Five runs in this over so far. Draws away. Forces up to... Extra cover. Just a single. So, uh, two overs to go. And, uh, Leewards, 82 for 5. That to show they would be uh, too comfortable with the score at that point. They would be looking uh, to maximize these two overs. And the projected score now is just 91. I'm pretty sure they'll be thinking how they can get 18 more runs to get to at least 100. Looks to be Kiana Joseph. So looking to take peace off. And uh, Glasgow, of course, would have bowled out. Etienne uh, would have bowled out. So the option, well, Liz Crafton, of course, so uh, bowls left our medium paces, but one suspect that the captain is not willing to go to at this point. This one is slammed uh, down uh, to long off. And the Crafton is quickly across and cuts it off. I always hit hard down the ground. She does well, well to run around to her right. To stop that from. So Kiana Joseph, 3.1 overs for 12 runs. So a change in the field. Square leg goes back. Cover comes into the circle. Square leg being brought uh, forward of square. Edwards back on the boundary. It is also mid wicket on the boundary. Long on, long off. This one is hit down to long on. No, it is there. Stops the boundary, just allows a single. Singles and a 13, and the win was at this point. Here's a catch, and well taken. Well taken there by Etienne. At extra cover. Anthony uh, driving it to Etienne, uh, who is at extra cover. And uh, Joseph picks up her first wicket. That's giving herself some room there, Amanda Edwards. It's the way she's been looking to operate throughout her innings. 
unfortunately, just picking out that fielder. He was hit pretty hard, but he was always going straight to Paul Etienne. He takes a, a pretty regulation catch to go along with the wickets that she's picked up in this inning so far. Seem to have enjoyed that one to Etienne. <laughs> So Claxton comes to the middle. Claxton who has struggled with the timing in this T20 blaze. Just has nine deliveries, Claxton, in this innings to make an impact with the bat. Of course, he did make an impact Thursday evening with that hat trick. Left hander, of course. Not too sure about that cover fielder, whether to have her in or out. Well, it Eventually, is. they decided that she should go back. That's yeah. Glasgow, of course. Swings, misses. She played that one into her pads, Claxton. Joseph switches to uh, down the wicket for the left hander. Back punches straight. In fact, well, in the end, uh, they were not uh, taken. Would have been suicidal though. So one more delivery remaining in this penultimate over. Two runs off it so far and the wicket. Can she close it out, Kiana? Swung and swung hard. Catch well taken there by Crafton on the uh, long on boundary. Why this long on? Uh, just about uh, half a meter uh, just inside the boundary. And a good catch in the end. Well judged, well taken. And uh, there we see it. And Probably. she connected well, Claxton. Lots of height on that one, but not enough distance. As Nerissa Crafton takes a nice catch in, just inside the, the boundary. And Claxton would try to go. She had no choice. Perishes without scoring. 84 for 7. One more over remaining. So Crafton takes a good catch. Look at it again. Well judged. Probably a more than half a meter inside the boundary. Probably closer to a meter, but well judged nevertheless. Fletcher will finish off for the windwards. Uh, just two runs in that penultimate over. And well, he was would be hoping to do a lot better. That 100 runs uh, seems to be a fair distance off now. Well, that of course could be, could have been psychological. But uh, just the long off, back on the offside, there's long on mid wicket. Misses that one. It's almost taken off the off stump, taking out the off stump. Well, a tentative shot at this stage of the game. Anthony uh, not really looking to score that time. And uh, I, I would think that at this point of the game, uh, Batter should be looking to score. She swings this one in the air. Should be safe. And uh, just a single. Out to long off. Long off rather wide. So the field had to move quite a bit to her right uh, to retrieve took it on the bounce but just there the single Basca comes in to strike two deliveries one run so far in this over swings again in the air going down to long on will not get the in fact <laughs> it, it, it just goes 
uh, a few meters away from the bowler from in fact drops in a short mid on position for one moment I thought that had more power on it and just a single short and not uh, taking full advantage of gets a single as the bowler misfeels but Leeward's really and not putting the wheeler to the ball at this point. It was short, but it was always going away from her because it's a leg spinning delivery. And she was giving herself even more room, so she wasn't able to connect cleanly. S sweeps, but straight to square leg. Gilbert is there uh, to stop the run. Another good over so far for the windwards. Uh, that was swept really well, but just couldn't find the gap on that occasion. Bashka. Final delivery. Basker swings it in the air. It's going out towards win wicket. They're looking for a second run. Basker is back. The return goes to the keeper's end. It's not a very good one. And uh, even though it was not a good one, had uh, the keeper hit the stumps, uh, Basker might have been on the way. But two runs nevertheless to the uh, leewards. And uh, the windwards uh, finished well in the end. Uh, just 89 uh, for seven, and uh, Lee was uh, uh, win was, of course, I think, would be happy with that score. Yes, they will. They, they had a, a pretty a decent bowling display, and luckily for them as well, luck was on their side tonight. I'll say that because the two batters that they, that had missed opportunities didn't go on to score heavily. So, 89 for seven, Leeward Islands, and when we get back. Windward Islands require just 90 runs. So we'll be back shortly after the innings break.
Yeah, and we're back live. Winwell Islands, after a very spirited bowling display, managed to restrict Leeward Islands to 89 for 7. They now require 90 runs for a victory. Kiana Joseph and Janelia, Janelia Glasgow, the two openers. Shanisha Hector is going to start things for the Leeward Islands. I'm joined by Earl Smitten. Night, Earl. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Stacy. Stacy Ann. The first, uh, the Windwards uh, would be looking to get a good start here, just chasing 90 runs. But what they cannot afford to do, though, is to uh, get into the shell. Uh, they would have to keep the scoreboard ticking and uh, uh, put the pressure on the Leeward Islands. If they allow the Leeward Islands to bowl that deliveries and probably. Uh, push the required run rate up. Or they could find themselves in a spot of bother. Mm, keep, an, keep an eye on the running in this innings from these two openers. You see Kiana seem to be struggling with something in her right leg. So first ball. Some wit given. Played straight to short cover. They were struggling with that since in their bowling innings. Seems to still be troubling her at this point in time. Perhaps we might not see too many uh, sharp singles. It's timing it well, though, yes. but straight to feelers. She certainly is. I was just about to say that all. Oh, took the words right out of my mouth. But they're going straight to the feelers that time to Tonya Martin, who's back in today. And again, but straight to a feeler. So not able to find the gap just yet. And it's something we were talking about off air. It's 90 runs, yes, required from 120 deliveries to start. But if you get stuck, you can well see this Leeward Islands outfit all over this Windward Islands, Windward Islands team. So they still need to find a way to be positive, pick up the singles as well. Find a way to keep the scoreboard ticking. Still another dot to start. So four deliveries and four dots to start this over. Leeward Islands would have to feel well also. We saw Claxton just moving smartly to a left there at backward point and preventing a run quickly onto uh, that uh, ball. A pretty watchful start from Kiana. Everything has been played to a fielder so far. Shanisha Hector has been bowling really well for Leeward Islands. The final delivery. Can she finish off the over? It's one hit nicely. Firmly struck, but again, straight to Tanya Martin at mid off. So a maiden over to start. So very good start there for the Leeward Islands. Hector ball in a good line and length, not giving much away. And uh, seems as though uh, Joseph Doe is not going to be looking for any uh, sharp singles. She could have easily taken the pace off of uh, some of those shots and uh, picked up a single or two. But she seemed to be bent on uh, getting through the infield, and probably looking for boundaries. So Claxton should be full of confidence after that hat-trick that took her team to victory with ball in hand. Ball into Janelia Glasgow, who's about to face her first delivery in this batting innings for Winwell Islands. Claxton, of course, one of the uh, quicker, uh, fast bowlers we have seen in the tournament. Uh, we look at uh, some of the other fast bowlers. They have been... 
uh, fairly pedestrian. I think of Sherry and Fraser who bowls at a fairly decent clip. Wilmot, of course, from Jamaica. With Arford. Just a single. <laughs> Glasgow off strike. And off the mark. Oh, there's an overthrow as well. And they, they managed to come back for two. So, not good feeling from the World Islands. They need to be able to save all of the runs that they can. Have to be extremely good in the field. A low score. Don't uh, have a very yeah. They don't have a very big score on the board, so fielding will be very important. Well, you cannot afford to give away runs like that with overthrows. Straight up to start, the field the, the keeper misses. Renice Boyce with the gloves tonight, and Kiana called through Janelia Glasgow. For a buy, signal by umpire Candice Laborde. So, giving away two runs uh, so far in this over. Wild swing across the line there from Kiana Joseph. That one kept a bit, kept a bit low as well. Yes, she was in no position to play that shot. And the delivery which kept low. And swinging across the line wildly. Missing it completely. Yeah, Kiana seems to be very lim even more limited in her footwork tonight. Certainly struggling with an injury. Well, can't say an injury. She, she well, so struggling with some sort of a niggle. Don't want to call an injury on, on her just yet. It is hindering her movement. Seems to be in some discomfort. So she's looking to take on the bowlers with some big hits. Just hasn't managed to find the gap just yet she's timing it quite well continues to do so but just can't get off the mark just yet nine deliveries face without scoring Down the ground this time with power, and that's four runs for Kiana. So what a way to get off the mark. Yes, and it was up in her half. And she really swatted it down the ground uh, quite powerfully. And uh, she would have enjoyed that. She did not have to uh, exert any energy by running. Just struck it well and struck it straight for four. Yeah, so four runs to end the over. Takes the score now to seven after two overs. Good end to the over there for uh, the Winwoods and for Joseph. This Leewoods team is a fighting team, though. And I'm pretty certain they're going to fight to the end. So Hector starts well. This is our seventh dot delivery in this inning so far. Two fielders out, cover and deep third. And 
that deep third comes into play right away. So Glasgow off the strike, first run from Shanisha Hector in her spell of bowling so far. Some width off or they look for a quick single. Get back, so a miscommunication from these two batters. Luckily, Tani Legasco was sent back by Kiana. Turn uh, the door a bit high. And she had enough time to get back. Whip to the onside this time. She's hustling through for a single. She's in some discomfort, Kiana. See her amble through for a single. You can see her certainly <coughs> favoring that right leg. That's in the groin area. And she definitely seems to be struggling a bit with that area. Walk nicely off the pads. We just get one. Hit powerfully just past a diving left arm of Shanisha Hector. Schultz will catch it from one of the fielders. A dot to end the over. After three, they are 10 without loss. Yes, uh, 10 without loss. We see Joseph seem, 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 seemingly uh, struggling from a negro. And uh, she's looking to uh, probably. Um, uh, pick up boundaries as opposed to uh, pick up singles and she's striking it powerfully but not really finding the gaps football match of course going on over on the far side on the uh, western side of the ground in the football field uh, premier division match here being played in St. Kitts Claxton to continue to Glasgow. Change of angle for her this time. Coming around the wicket to Janelia Glasgow. Leeward Islands could do it another hat trick here. <laughs> Ten for no loss. Of course, there's uh, some support here for the uh, Leeward Islands team. You can hear uh, some speakers uh, shouting words of encouragement from beyond the boundary. Getting to bang it in. Glasgow has worked it to square leg. I think we won't have the legs to get to the boundary. Fine leg. Run around quite nicely to cut it off. Nicely worked there by Glasgow, though. Turned around for two. Kiana Joseph uh, limping through for the second one. She decided to go back over the wicket now to Janelia Glasgow. <laughs> I think the plan might be to just angle it across her. They're supporting every 
dark delivery, the spectators. There we go, right across her. Keeping low as well. It's not getting up and hitting the glove of the keeper. It's keeping about. Not too sure if she's taking pace off the ball. But a few of those deliveries didn't get up at all. Fall start by Jazara Claxton. The two runs off the over so far. Not a bad over at all, but she want to close this out with a wicket. Well, at least uh, 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 probably not conceding a boundary like she did in the last over, the first over. Yeah, so a dot to finish things off. Four overs gone. Winwood Islands are 12 without loss. We're back live, and Kiana Joseph is getting some attention from the physio. We already noticed she was struggling with what appears to be a groin injury. Question is whether or not uh, she should continue batting. We know uh, groin injuries are very sensitive issues, and uh, she could very well aggravate uh, the situation. A lot more by staying out there. Uh, in fact, at the start of her innings, she, she seemed to be uh, struggling a bit. So perhaps. I guess with injuries, it all it really comes down to the the player themselves because sometimes they know their own body and they know, you know, if it's too much for them, then they can easily come off. But she'll know, you know, if they'll be able to manage it out in the middle. And Kiana appears to think that. She'll be fine and she can carry on, so she's going to do just that. Well, we, we, we'll wait and see how she uh, manages it out there. So Hector to get a third over in the power play. Bowling to Kiana Joseph. Bit of width offered and too wide. Signal by the umpire. Not a bad option at all to Kiana. It's going to be hard for her, especially now with that injury, to get that f her feet moving across to the offside. So I see the plan here from Shanisha Hector. Just needs to execute better. One, two straight. I'll play it straight to the fielder. That short, fine leg. Leeward Islands, though, they, 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 they need to test that leg out a bit more. Uh, they're bowling a bit short, which makes it easier for uh, Joseph to uh, play the ball. interesting to see how she handled the 
uh, spinners when they come into the attack. Yes, don't think it's too long now before Liebird, who usually bowls very early, comes into the attack. one she picks it up and swings it powerfully to the onside a wait on the signal from the umpire just lands in the boundary so four runs to Kiana I was right in her arc good strike there by Kiana Joseph and uh, I guess we'll be seeing a lot more of this might be a good thing for the Wilmot Islands because they seem to be uh, batting themselves uh, I in, in into into a hole, not really scoring quickly, but the fact that she's injured and uh, willing to uh, go after the bowling might be a good thing for them. That's yes, what the way the field is set. She needs to stay away. Well, she has to try to not be as straight as she she's been for those last two deliveries. The protection and the boundary is at cover and deep third swings it across the line Kimberly Anthony gives chase they're gonna come back for two Anthony not putting the pressure on the batters fumbling a bit out there in the deep and two runs easily taken in the end So I think now I was Shawnee Sha I look to probably come around the wicket to her and take it away from her bullet full on the on the line. There you go. That is not a great delivery at all. I was certainly not bowling to the plan the way the field is set. So another four for Kiana Joseph. They always tell you beware of the injured man. Kiana, a woman, of course. <laughs> but that's the old adage. And you see she's picked up four, three boundaries in this over so far. That was four bowling, though, on the pads of Joseph, who is a very capable batter. So she, so sa she said thank you and flicked it down to fine leg for four. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was saying. You bowl that sort of length and line to Kiana. She's not going to score heavily off you. And especially with the way the field is set. So that is what I expected to see from Shanisha Hector. Last delivery of the over. Executed quite well. But the over went for 11. So 67 now required from 90 balls. 23 runs. 23 without loss after 5 overs. Yes, uh, those 11 runs... Um uh, providing an impetus to uh, the uh, windward scoring rate, and uh, prior to that over, it was below three. It was below four runs for over. It's now uh, well over four runs for over, uh, almost touching on five runs for over. So a very good over there for the windwards. A good start from Jazara Claxton. Glasgow looking to join the party with the boundary hitting. And manages, well, she just misses out. Yeah, so see the plan. Cover isn't out on the boundary to Genelia Glasgow. They do have deep third and fine leg gets an edge but it was always dying on the way to the keep the, the first slip and gets off strike gets a single good start though for the windwards uh, 24 for no loss we're in over number six they have not lost the wicket as yet Yeah, that's it right there, Claxton. Just try to keep it there more often to Kiana. Claxton, though, has been angling the ball across the 
left-handed. She has bowled most of the deliveries to Glasgow. And she's been able to angle it across the, the, the left-hander. And now we saw she's yeah. doing this to Joseph. Two left-handed batters. Pretty similar in that if you take it away from them, across their body, outside the off stump, more than likely they're not going to be able to score. Well, certainly a good plan to both of these batters and the bowlers. They don't need to change their plans too much to them. So far, like being called up and long on going out. It's time. She connects well. And over the head of that middle fielder for another boundary. Very good shot indeed by Joseph. Timing it well. She has been timing the ball well. Uh, it's just that she has been hitting fielders for most parts. But a very good shot this time, taking the aerial route over the top of uh, mid-off and down to the boundary for four. Bit slow at that time from Claxton. Waited for it, Kiana Joseph, but still wasn't able to make sufficient connection to get it past the fielders. Uh, Joseph, of course, uh, a very dangerous batter. Scores quickly. She has 19 from 22. A boundary hitter, of course. Hits it straight to Shanisha Hector. Well, Amanda Edwards diving to her left, rather, and gets another boundary. Sorry. Edwards got a hand to it, her uh, hands to it. We've seen her take a brilliant catch already in this tournament. Edwards unable to hold on on that occasion. So a chance goes a begging. And Kiana moves up to 23. And the score moves to 32 without loss at the end of the power play. So a good power play there, uh, relatively good power play for uh, the Winwards, uh, scoring at just uh, 5.33 runs per over and not losing a wicket. And uh, most importantly, that's the important thing, they're not losing a wicket. But we are seeing the first bowling change from the media center end. Yeah, she's scoring at a runner ball now, Kiana Joseph. Kimberly Anthony replacing Shawnisha Hector. It's the end of the power play as well. Just might see a double change here. Perhaps we might see it was a libel from the far end. Surprised that she hasn't been introduced into the attack or any slow bowlers thought she would have been brought on immediately. They're only using three fillers out. Cover, long on and the long off. Leewards of course need uh, so we can see and they need them very quickly. Nicely played in the cover area. Just get one. So Joseph back on strike. She's decided to have a go. It's, it's playing off for her. She's 23 of 23 deliveries. I don't think she's going to hang around to Kimberly Anthony. Won't see too many blocks for sure. They decide to send Bashka back on the boundary at mid wicket. Using all four fielders out for Kiana. Well, I was wrong. It is a block. <laughs> Surprised by that. Could have easily been a single had there been a uh, fitter bat at the, uh, at the far end. So one is chipped in the air in the direction of Bashka. It will fall just short of her. 
to our credit, uh, Joseph uh, is not wasting any time out there. Uh, she has been able to move the scoreboard along. And she has been able to hit the boundaries. And she's not moving well. You see that she's in some discomfort. So you won't see a lot of running from Kiana. And she's looking to go big. She's 24 now, half 25 deliveries. So block and run. But Glasgow has to be aware of what's happening with her partner at the other end. As the over comes to an end, when the Islands are 34 without loss. Now we're going to wait and see what would transpire from the far end. Uh, it appears uh, as though it's going to be a ball in change. question is uh, who will come into the attack at this point. Seems to be Tanya Martin. Called her all the way off the boundary. That seems to be the change that they're going with from the far end. Back in the game today, of course, Tonya Martin, after missing out on the last two, picked up an injury in the first match against Barbados. So Tanya Martin picks it up from the far end, but <laughs> uh, one wonders whether or not uh, Roselle should have been brought on from this immediate center end. The battles so far, they are pretty comfortable to the quicker stuff. And we saw Anthony being brought into the attack from this the media center end. Needs to make Joseph stretch a bit more. Sometimes, though, I wonder if uh, some of these teams are just following a script and they're not prepared to go outside of the box and innovate. A wide signal. I hear what you're saying, but they have deviated from the plan a bit. Leeward Islands, from what I've seen of them in the tournament, Rosa Liebord is usually used in the power play. Shouts of how was that from all of the fielders, of course, desperate for wicked Leeward Islands. So they haven't used Rosel Liebord in the power play as they have. So different plan. It's wide. Another wide in this over. So two now. Yeah, so different plans to the Windmill Islands team. My concern though is uh, you, you, you think in terms of uh, your wicked takers. Uh, if you, you have made a low score and you know you have to get wickets to be in the game. Yeah, Leibold has been one of their steady wicket takers in this tournament. I know these two played warm-up matches against each other before the start of the tournament. So maybe maybe the Windward Islands battles took a liking to Leibold and they remembered that. And they decided, you know, we're not going to use her right now. One is played down the ground. We've seen some steady bowling so far from the uh, Leeward Islands, but uh, none to suggest that uh, they would pick up a wicket anytime soon. And I see Captain Amanda Edward also is an option. It's hit down the ground. Mid-off is in the circle. 
So looking to put the squeeze on a bit anywhere she can, Amanda. Bringing up that field in the circle to Glasgow. <coughs> She's another option as well that can come into the attack to these two left handers. Very wide delivery. Fielder diving over that one. Thought keeper missed it. It kept pretty low. Live ball looking to dive to stop it. Diving over it in the end and it crashes into the boundary. And they pick up five wides. Field of course being live ball and the baller we were just speaking about. And she's bowled her. So Tanya Martin, not able to find her line early, bowled quite a few wide deliveries, comes back and bowls Janelia Glasgow. So much needed wicket for the Leeward Islands. Yes, much too, too close for, for that shot by Glasgow. Um, she was looking to force into the offside, missed it completely and had an off stump knocked back. Uh, but a good blow struck there for the Leeward Islands. Uh, uh, but... Pretty good start though by uh, the Winwoods, 42 for one now. Captain Afi Fletcher mm -hmm. out in the middle. That was the last ball in that over. Eight runs coming from it, but picking up that important wicket that they've been searching for, Leeward Islands. Kiana Joseph, the uh, more aggressive of the two openers, still there, 25 of 29. She gets an edge, it just passes the fielder in short at short third. And picks up another boundary. So things happening here all of a sudden for Leeward Islands. While the swing there by uh, Joseph. Uh, taking the outer portion of the bat and running down to third man for four. For two just four of course. And you said things are happening. Uh, but of course what happened there was that <laughs> the Leeward Islands got four runs closer. Uh, to that 89 runs scored by the Leeward Islands. So no ball, so not a good result, and no ball, and a misdirected delivery, and another four. So back-to-back -back boundaries now for Kiana Joseph, and she has a free hit as well coming up. Not to show. Uh, Anthony is the right choice at the moment to be bowling to Joseph. And with that wicket going down, we would have thought that... <laughs> Uh, perhaps the captain would have opted to bring Rosa Leibold into the attack from the center immediately. Of course, look at wickets. Instead, runs are flowing in this over. Nine runs so far. Free Reset. hit in the air. Should get just a single. The Ural Islands supporters are uh, excited, of course. Uh, ball being in the air, but of course you know the possibility of the player being out there so 10 runs off two deliveries in this over so far Fletcher to face face her first delivery Just the three feelers out, cover long on and deep square. We take a quick single. Who said Joseph was injured? I thought so too, but <laughs> <laughs> it's looking a bit 
a bit more free flowing in that run so maybe the worst has passed has passed rather and adrenaline of course might be flowing at this point and she's running a lot better now Kiana Joseph I guess spending time in the middle was good for this injury. Yes, as the body warms, uh, she would not she would not feel it as much. Bit of weight offered, which I would certainly think she's missed out there. Not only width, but uh, a bit too short also, and that should have been, should have been put away by there by Fletcher. So a dot to finish things off. An expensive over comes to an end. Women Islands are 54 for one after nine overs. Yes, 54 for one, nine overs gone and uh, good scoring rate at this point. Uh, the count rate being six, then they just have to score over three runs uh, for over. So things going in the right direction for the Winwood Islands. Only lost uh, one wicket. So Martin to continue. Looking to go big up your Fletcher. Just telling Kiana Joseph she doesn't need to go across the line all the time. Cover if she gets it past that fielder at short extra cover she can easily pick up a boundary with that line so let's see what she decides to do here with the second delivery she listens to her captain slams it into the cover area Shot and pulled. A straight too long on. Martin has picked up that wicket, uh, but uh, she has not bowled very well uh, in this spell. Swings it down the ground. There's a fielder there. She drops it. It hasn't gone for four, but she's put it down. They're looking for a third. Happy Fletcher sends her back. Rukiana gets a life. Bad mistake uh, by that fielder. Looks like uh, Clark. Yeah, it's Hector that put it down, In actually. Fact. Works it well and gets it for four. Afi Fletcher, so that's her first boundary in the innings. Too short again from Tonya Martin. This time she executes well and gets a boundary. So the, the windward's making light work on this total so far. 61 for one, another uh, uh, 20, 20. Eight runs needed. Twenty-nine, in fact. Twenty-eight to level the score. Fuller this time, driven to the field at short cover, who missed fields, and they pick up a single. Captain that time, misfielding that. 
So at the end of the over, 10 bold, 62 for one, and the players will have a drink. Well, we're back live, and Leibert comes into the attack uh, from the media center end. And uh, first half of this innings completed, and uh, the Greenwood Islands winning that first half. Yeah, just switching the batters. They got a single off that last over, so uh, Fletcher should be on strike. Good spot there from the umpires. I think I've seen an incident some time ago in a cricket match where uh, a, bat, a batsman came back short and banged down too long off uh, for singles. The batter came back and was not aware of which end he should be batting from. Yeah, that's why umpires are so important to control the game in the middle. So a good spot again by the umpires. So Liebord started too short to Afi Fletcher. Let's see what she has in store for Kiana Joseph. She's attempting to sweep. Loud appeal might have pitched outside the leg stump. And the uh, umpire unmoved. 
seem to have pitched the outside leg. Just the outside leg. Joseph is back, looking to force. Gets it as far as backward point. And they can't score as she finds Claxton in the way. Use of feet down to the fielder and, and the out. fielder accepts it. And so a wicket goes down, Kiana Joseph. Kiana Joseph um, swinging that one down to Whitey long on. And uh, being out dismissed and uh, uh, Leibert comes on and immediately picks up a wicket. Yeah, and that's what we've been saying. Leibert has consistently been picking up wickets for Amanda Edwards every time she's been introduced, especially in the power play. So I was rather surprised that she wasn't used earlier and immediately she strikes. Certainly uh, the Leeward Islands missing, missing the plot here. There's a new batter, Kimon Homer. And, uh, just the second wicket going down for uh, the windwards though. And, uh, still in a very good position. Required run rate just 2.89. Things might have gotten out of hand for the Leeward Islands, but uh, Leeward striking and striking very early in the first over. And this is what I was speaking about. If you uh, make a low score, you, you, you should be looking towards uh, your bowlers who are most likely to give you a wicket. Cannot afford to bring on a defensive bowler. Roma gets it down to a short fine. And in fact, it's a leg by. Leewards would be more than happy to pick up the wicket of uh, Fletcher at this point. Fletcher, of course, being the captain of the uh, Windward Islands team would be looking to take this home for a team. That's a big hit, is it? Just bouncing inside the rope for four more runs here. Yes, a very good hit indeed there by, by Fletcher. Um, swinging it over mid-wicket. And one bounce into the boundary for four. So the over is completed. A wicket in it. After 11 overs, Windward Islands are 68 for two. So, uh, a mixed over there from Leibard. Uh, in the end, being roughed up a bit there by Fletcher. And uh, uh, Fletcher continues to push the scoring on for uh, the Windwards. They're now 68 for two. So, just another 22 runs required. Lots of deliveries in which to get these runs. 54 deliveries, in fact. <coughs> Not a change from the fire, and the captain comes into the attack. And, uh, I think the, 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 the spinners should have been on earlier on, early in the piece. Yeah, I think Claxton and Hector did well in their first two overs to curtail the run scoring of the two batters. It's a healthy edge this time. Leibold gives chase, pulls it back just in off the bunny rope so they get two. Yeah, but I think they, they probably probably overbowled him one over too much, especially Hector in the power play. So after the, the initial squeeze from those two, she could have looked to give an over to at least the Leibold or herself in the power play. Because then, because of the pressure that was built up, the batters would have been looking to go at the slower bowling. Homer is swiveling into a wee, taking it on the pads. Delivery angle down the leg side, a bit straight. She missed it completely. What the leewards would have needed it was, was to get rid of uh, the openers as quickly as possible. Up to short mid wicket. Saxena is there. No run. Well, just 
just another 20 needed. Short and punch to extra cover. Blackstone is there, there's no run. Of course, this is an area too uh, where teams would have to <laughs> do better. They need to strategize better as this one goes up to square leg for four. So, who, who were whipping that one up to square leg? It was uh, a good shot. It, she just more or less whipped it uh, down to square leg for four and uh, takes the team closer to that target. Yeah, I understand why she gave next over to Hector and Claxton in the power play. They were bowling quite well. And she certainly thought they were the best options to take the wickets. Yes, there was certainly nothing wrong with that move at that point. As that over comes to an end. Back live, 74 for two. So yes, uh, I was saying that certainly Claxton and Hector started well. Uh, but the next move was, uh, in my opinion, not the correct one. This one is in the air. Taken. It was in the air. There was a bit of miscommunication between the bowler and uh, the captain. And in the end, it was the captain who took the catch. And Fletcher goes. And here we see the spinners really picking up wickets. Uh, Lybert picking up a second wicket. Yeah. A second wicket. Fletcher looking to go hard across the line, getting a top edge, taken easily by Captain Amanda Edwards. Don't know if she was thinking maybe go for the bonus point that will lift them off the bottom of the table. Moonwood Islands. Still requires 16 runs to get Nerissa Crafton, new batter in. So, quick wickets going down here for uh, the windwards, but still in a very comfortable position. Uh, 16 runs needed from 47 deliveries. And uh, required run rate just 2.04. Crafton, of course, a left-hander. But, of course, uh, uh, two of the main batters for the windward islands are going. And we have seen teams crumble. Can the Leewards make something out of this one? Another wicket or two here. Mm -hmm. And they certainly could uh, cause the Windwards to panic. That will be an extraordinary comeback as we see in overthrow. And they get two more runs. Nerissa Crafton started quite well in the 50 over version. Got a 48 and a 47 in that tournament. Has been able to find her feet in terms of run scoring in the T20 version of things. Got off the mark immediately though. And uh, given an extra run by that overthrow. She's playing down to short third man for another run. Sets off immediately. Yeah. Well, that is their feeling. Yeah, lots of balls to play with. They've gotten themselves in a position to win the game. Win with Islands. Well, immediately, uh, Crafton has come out and she has been busy. Getting off the mark immediately. There's no panic at the stage from the Windward Islands. Uh, she looks rather comfortable. Pig drive back to the bowler. Uh, this time by Homer. Homer. 
So one more day left in this tournament. That's on Monday. Good hit. Uh, down towards a uh, uh, straightish long one. Just a single. And of course, the tournament winding down. Uh, Jamaica seems to be out in front. Uh, seems to be on course to do a double uh, this year. Barbados would have done that last year. Good quick single here. Uh, Crafton just taking the pace off. Uh, the easy bit into the offside for a quick single. Yeah, good to see Crafton showing lots of positivity since she's come to the middle. Such a talented left handed batter. One will Island says 79 now with three wickets. 11 runs still required, but lots of balls to do that in. Yes, and it could be very well be over in this uh, particular over. And, uh, of course, the Leeward Island supporters below us, they've gone quiet. I've not heard them for a while. Edwards making adjustment to a field. Uh, Backward square, goes back onto the boundary, Leibard. There's a deep mid-wicket. There's a long one also. But of course, uh, uh, the, the windwards can do this in singles. Lots of time left in this game. Lots of deliveries. Is a an easy single might get two. In fact, they decide against it. Grafton has been busy. She's looking for every run. And that's good to see from the Windward Islands that you know they they've lost every match in this tournament so far in the T20 version. And they came out here with. Lots of positivity, especially starting with the bowling. And now here with the bat, all batters looking quite positive, looking to score. Crafton looking to score off every delivery. If she can't get a hit boundary away, she's looking to drop and run. Really good to see from a Winwood Island standpoint, albeit all a bit too late now in terms of winning the tournament. So, Leewards, uh, who came into this match with uh, an outside chance of winning uh, the tournament, uh, they won this match and picked up some bonus points. And gone on to win tomorrow, the, uh, with the results going their way tomorrow. Uh, now, this loss, uh, hopes of uh, causing an upset in this tournament, uh, receding. Up to mid-wicket. Uh, taking the first one quickly back for the second run. The return goes. In fact, it's wide of the ball at the far end. The non-strikers end and two runs taken. So uh, we are down to single digits now. Just um, some eight runs needed. And uh, just uh, two hits away. And Stacey, and who is your money on at this point? <laughs> We're talking money. <laughs> um, Winwood Islands, they are firmly in control of this game. Not a betting person, but if I was betting, I'd certainly bet on the batting team. Uh, Liebold into ball to Nerissa Crafton. Well, it's virtually a foregone conclusion now. It's a wide signal. So the inch one run closer to victory, Winwood Islands. Lybert, who I felt was brought on much too late in the piece. This one driven into the onside and uh, tumbling, saved there by Basker, but could not prevent the single.
I don't think they'll be able to get the bonus point from here with our islands. Leewards, of course, continue the, to defend their boundaries. There's a deep mid wicket. A long on. Please. Swing and a miss uh, by Homer to a delivery outside the off stump. Six runs needed. One good hit. Swing and the bold. My word. So Lyman picks up a third wicket. Big swing there by Homer, missing it completely and being bowled down. Yeah, we just have to go back to that point, what we've been saying all along. Lyboard, why wasn't she introduced earlier into the, the attack? She picked up the third wicket, and her economy rate isn't bad either. Captains, of course, uh, they need to be proactive, especially when you're defending a low total. course the opening ball has started well Hector and Craxton but then having gotten a, a, a good start uh, by your opening bowlers then of course you would look to bring your attacking bowler uh, into play yeah that uh, last over by Hector is actually <laughs> what started the run scoring really for Winwood Islands both batters they weren't they, they weren't they weren't quite getting the 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 boundaries away and the scoring rate was kept in check for most of the power play Poor line delivery that and uh, uh attempted a sweep by Etienne missed it completely but a single uh, to the score nevertheless uh, reduces the required amount uh, to five. Yeah, but just to continue, that fifth over by Hector is what really set off Kiana's intent. It's a quick single take in. Well, an easy one in the end. That was hit hard to Amanda Edwards who missed fields. And Paul Etienne is off the mark. So, four needed. Just the boundary. The words continue to protect the uh, cover boundary, the backward square boundary, but seems to be all over for the leewards. Drive and edges down to short third man for quick single. And uh, Paul Letian diving in and getting there quite easily. Big drive there, big dive there by Paul Etienne. Players seem to really like that one. <laughs> Yes, she got up with a and smile. Got so lots of cheers for that diving effort. He's really enjoying a cricket. 87 for four. Three runs needed. Etienne is swinging and swinging straight down the ground. Four runs. And it's all over. So finishing it in style, Etienne. And uh, the Windward Islands winning this one. And uh, defeating the Leeward Islands. Pretty sweet hit from Paul Etienne. Symbolizes this sort of confidence she's played throughout with throughout this match. Starting with her bowling, picking up a double wicket maiden to start things off. And that ends what has been a pretty easy game in the end for Windward Islands. Not challenged throughout with bat or ball so victory to Windward Islands Leeward Islands they'll, they'll be disappointed for sure pretty confident bunch they are they still managed to pick up two wins in this game they still have a chance to finish on a high they face Jamaica in the last round so the last round the last round coming up on Monday so do stick with us here for the rest of this Cricket West Indies T20 Blaze. Thank you and good night.